Okay, so I was talking about the uh, the Native Americans of Kentucky. You have the Green River Indians, and the Green River Indians are any of the Native Americans who are living on the Green River um, in Kentucky. I had a map of Green River. Um, anyways, I found that, like I'll show the map here shortly. You should have already seen the first video. So it's just it's in south um, western Kentucky. So uh, I found out that the Uchi actually had some of their. Um, they actually had. Dang, I lost my notes on this, so I'm just going by memory. But the Uchi um, had some villages on the Green River. So the Uchi tribe is a Green River Indian. Also, have uh, there's a Southern Cherokee, and there's also something else. Let's see. There's a Uchi, Southern Cherokee, and something else. I don't know. I went through one of the archaeological digs, and we got to find out that there was dogs. They had dogs. Um, they buried their, they buried the the dogs with their owners, and they also had dogs that were buried by themselves. So five thousand years ago, you had Native Americans who actually had um, they had dogs. So you know, there's they also had uh, clay floors. They had burnt clay floors, which indicates that they were permanent settlements. And this is from three thousand to two thousand BC. Uh, Where would they go? What happened to them? Nobody knows. They um they ate deer, they ate turtle, they ate nuts. So they were meat eaters. They were plant eaters. And um, the uh, the agricultural development actually happened like 10,000 years ago. So they've been raising agriculture here for a long ass time. Uh, why they are considered savages, I have no idea. The Yuchi thing is a big find because the Yuchi was, um, I found out that the Yuchi was coming into contact with Hernando de Soto. Hernando de Soto is one of the first white people that actually came through southeastern Kentucky. So the first white person, he was a Spanish conquistador, spread a ton of diseases. He said there was like, you know, there's like hundreds of video villages when he came through. And yet when the LaSalle came down the Mississippi River, he only found like five villages. So what happened to them all? Did the diseases, De Soto spread? Did that all spread and they died? So I think that's a fair um, thing to, to think happened. But the Hernando De Soto came across a tribe called the Sispa. And the Yuchi was originally from the... Um, they're usually, uh, eventually, they were, where I hear most of them about is in eastern Tennessee. So they crossed the eastern Tennessee, DeSoto did, the Sispas, and the Sispas are the Uchi. They, they documented them as being also the Uchi. So, you know, that's the Uchi have been here for a long time. The name of the Uchis is actually the people of the sun. They're the, um, let's see, the people of the sun. They're also the root people. They have their own uh, language system. They have, you know, this, this Yuchi language. They're a language isolate, uh, which actually indicates that the, um, that the Native Americans or that the Yuchi people is, um, could be the original Native Americans, right? They all could have descended from one tribe. It could have been one tribe that came across either the Bering Straits, the land, ice bridge, or whatever in Alaska, or they came by boats, right? So, you know, we had, uh, there's an estimate, 10 million is what uh, Howard Zinn says, but 100 million um, is, you know, the biggest estimate that I've seen. And if we've had 100 million Native Americans, where'd they all go? Where are all the Native Americans at? And they're nowhere to be found. So the Uchi, um, I'm going to try to knock down some of these pages here. Uh, but the Uchi, they've been out here for a long time. DeSoto crossed them. They was in eastern uh, Tennessee. They also had like uh, Oklahoma, Georgia, and South Carolina roots. And they have tribes right here on the Green River, right? According to early maps, the Uchi had a town in the state on a river which appears to be identical with the Green River. This page also says some of the other ones that you see, right? Just a dark and bloody hunting ground. But we see that the Chickasaw were here, the Cherokee, the Mazopalia, the Shawnee, Uchi, and then they just say hunting bands. Illinois, Miami, Iroquois, and Delaware. Um, but I feel like once people have died on this land, then this land is a part of them, even if they didn't have a permanent settlement. So you had Wyandots, you had Mingos, um, you know, Pianchishaw. You had a lot of Native Americans that had died on this land too. So these are the ones that they admit to. And this is the, the there's that one famous map that only shows four Native American tribes. And this one right here shows that there's nine, at least nine Native American tribes. I found 35. Native American tribes that have um, considered Kentucky either, you know, their original homeland or it was their home at some point. So 35, uh, that's that's a lot of Native Americans. There's a lot of people that were wiped out. The Green River is also connected to the Rough River Lake, so therefore that's the connection to Breckenridge County. There's hardly any information about, there were some Shawnee, they killed some Shawnee here, so the Shawnee were definitely in Breckenridge County, but who else was here? And, um, and I don't know, but the Green River Indians will give me an indication of the types of tribes, the types of villages that were around. 
they, you know, they're farther south than where we're at, but it's the same tributary, so it doesn't seem like it would be that uh, big of a notion to think that they would have kept on going up the river, establishing different villages, especially when you had other villages that were established throughout the Green River. Yuchi Indians, I remember some time ago we had a discussion on the list of a tribe of Native Americans called the Yuchi tribe. They lived in East Tennessee up to uh, around the Green River in Kentucky. Maybe one group of Indians which contributed to the Melungeon mix. I don't actually believe that, but they didn't know who the Melungeon people were, so they uh, are saying, well, what about these mysterious Yuchi people? Could they, the Melungeons have been the Yuchi? The Melungeons have been determined to be black and white. There's no Indian or Native American amongst them, and so they could have been one of the free um, black and white mixed families in uh, early America because it wasn't slavery at the beginning. Uh, slaves, you know, the first slaves come in 1619, but it didn't become like an institution um, for a little bit longer. There were free whites and free blacks, and they were allowed to enter marry. So once they entered married, then, you know, it became a crime to be black. Then they went underground, and they lived into the, the Appalachian Hills, and they were called the Melungeons. And they're actually a fascinating case study, but they're not the Yuchi. Something else interesting, they say that Yuchi, Yuchi with E-U, and then U, it's, it's spelled like Yuker, Yuchi, Yuker. So E-U-C-H-T, way down yonder, the Chattahoochee, the Yuchi, we're living there. I don't know, it all rhymes. <laughs> the Skip a Kit the Key, Yuchi, Kentucky. And they all end with, you know, E. Anyways, the uh, Kentucky tribes, there's actually only two tri tribes on this page that, that says that are recognized by the Kentucky tribe. One of them is, I think, Henderson, Kentucky. I want to say it's on the Green River, but I know the Southern Cherokee Nation has a... Um, has a reservation on the Green River. So the Southern Cherokee Nation of Kentucky is one of the tribes that's recognized here, and the Ridgetop Shawnee. So there are two. This was in 2009, and then the last one was 2006. So they just became recognized by the state, and then hopefully they'll get federal recognition once they get state recognition, right? And then once they get federal recognition, then they get their own land. They get their own, basically it's a nation within a nation. That's how uh, George W. Bush said about the Native Americans. They're a nation within a nation. And so, therefore, they're their own government. They can come up with their own rules, their own police system, and they should be allowed to fight the FBI and the federal government because that's their land, and it's been their land for 14,000 years. And, um, and white people in general, there's the people in government that give them the de designation were, were in the right, but there's a lot of the common folk who just are racist as shit, right? So the early tribes, Cherokee, the Cherokee claims some land in southeastern Kentucky, traces of culture. Um, I just want to go to the Yuchi, right? Again, we see the same sentence. It says, early maps, the Yuchi had a town in this state on a river, which appears to be identical with the Green River. So there's some map that only showed one town uh, that the Yuchi was in it. We've seen the same sentence before, but I've also seen where it says there were several towns on it. So uh, if the, I don't know where the Yuchi originally came from. They, you know, moved from here and there. Eastern Kentucky is when Hernando de Soto ran into him. There is a lot, I think, on the map of Kentucky where I, got, I should pull it out because there's four main tribes, right? They, they point out the Cherokee, the Chickasaw, the Shawnee, and then the Yuchi is in south, um, southeast Kentucky. So it's in the bottom of the mountains. It's in, you know, they put them, and there was Cherokee that was down there too. So I think they're, they, all the tribes probably crisscrossed each other. Um, but they did have Yuchi. Yuchi was one of the main tribes on this, you know, map of Kentucky that only had four areas of the Native Americans. So Cherokee, I've heard. Shawnee, I've heard. Um, Chickasaw, I've always heard. But the Yuchi was kind of like, who? Even like the Mazopalia. So when I look at this list here, Wyandotte, I'm starting to learn more about the Wyandotte. And actually, I love the Yuchi even more now because the Shawnee, they were beasts. You know, um, they were conciliatory in the beginning and they tried to make peace with the white man. But eventually they killed Cornstalk and then they killed his son. Um, and once they just murdered him, it was just straight up. It was like on a peace envoy, a peace mission. And they just wanted to, you know, determine what the boundaries were and what the pro. And then they just murdered him. They just fucking killed him. So they, um, you know, their forced assassination of the leaders of the other tribes when uh, George Washington did that to the French, he almost about court-martialed, and they let him go, but they probably shouldn't have, right? It turned out to be a really bad deal for the French after that happened. Um, so uh, there's one more thing actually I want to mention that the Native American, the big world wars that happened, most people in America, and especially Kentucky, don't know that there was actually four French, Indian, British wars that had happened before the Revolutionary War. So the Revolutionary War had all the same players, right? French, English, 
Native Americans and white European colonists. So you had, you know, all the same players in all the wars, but there was actually four major wars before the American Revolution. The French and Indian War, I would say most people know about, French, Indian, and British War. But you also had Queen Anne's War, King George's War, and King William's War. So you had three major world wars that was European wars, but they spilled over here because if France and England is fighting or the Dutch and the Swedes are fighting, you know, in Europe, then their colonies aren't going to get along either. And some there might be opportunists, right? They just might, well, hell, we're at war. I can do whatever I want to you. And, uh, and it would be considered under the, you know, the umbrella of war, really, as long as you could say, well, I did it for the cause. <laughs> I did it for the English. I did it for the French. Uh, so I think that's amazing. I think there are four world wars, and we don't even talk about that. So American history, it's like oh, there's prehistory with the natives and Columbus and, you know, some other shit happened. And let's fast forward to Daniel Boone. Let's fast forward to... Um, George Washington being president. Yeah, there's things that happened before that, but really, that's when it started. <laughs> and um, and uh, that's not that's not fair because the continent was here. There's people that have been populated the continent here for the last fourteen thousand years. And um, and when it comes to those wars, there are major wars which a lot of people was involved in. People had died in them. So Queen Anne's War. There was also War of Jenkins here, and a couple other father something wars. So there's others. There the Beaver Wars, the Iroquois Beaver Wars. Which were also major wars. They considered the Beaver Wars to go on for a hundred years, and it was just how the Iroquois kept on getting bigger and dominating the the, the Beaver trade with the Dutch or the French. And so, um, you know, they were able to to dominate the Beaver trade, but they did it through warfare. And they were also democratic. There was a lot of actually exciting things about the Iroquois. They were the first democracy on in, on the planet. The second one's Iceland. So the Iroquois actually had democracy before. Any of the Europeans did. They also had better agriculture. They were um, agriculturally astute. They had their agricultural revolution 14,000 years ago. You got the tomato, potato, corn, um, pumpkin, some other thing. <coughs> Excuse me. So, they had dogs, you know. They had weddings. They had, they had a lot of... Um, the similar things they had today. Another thing the Iroquois have is that they had a federated system. They had six... Five nations, and it became six with the Tuscarora, the marijuana people, or the hemp people. But the five, um, the five nations was the the sort of how the thirteen colonies all got together. They all were their own, like Kentucky is its own country, but were part of these United States. So these are like fifty nations all in one nation. So the Iroquois was, you know, also the Mohawk and the Seneca and um, Tuscarora, and, you know, the other ones. But the um, they were all under one umbrella, and so that was a federal system, and it was democratic. So they had democracy, and they had a federal system before um, the United States had. So that's the the founding fathers supposedly were would be the Iroquois, right? The Iroquois would be the founding fathers, and the so-called founding fathers stole all their ideas from the uh, the Iroquois. So from Swans, Indian tribes in North America, some may simply be variant spellings for the same tribe, Cherokee, Chickasaw, Delaware, Mozo, Pelea, Shawnee, Wyandotte, Yuchi. Wyandots, I know that there's a Wyandot that killed John Irvin and got killed. So there's uh, Wyandots have been, I know, they said tribes and bands of Kentucky. So that's saying that they were here, Mazo, Pelea. That's another one that I'm kind of, um, I don't know much about. The Delaware were considered the grandfathers of the Shawnee. So the Delaware was actually the grandfathers, right? They're actually, uh, or the older brothers, or the older cousins, or something. And I actually I'm feeling a little parched, so I'm just gonna cut this short here. But the Uchi are is a Green River Indian, and um, and now you know. So there's something about the Uchi.